Hello and welcome to the instructional video demo for Buff Eater by Twisted Tools. In this video, we will give you a quick overview of most of Buff Eater's features to get you started. If you'd like more details, please download our documentation or use the internal hints provided within the instrument itself, which we will explain how to do later in this video. Buff Eater is an effects pack consisting of six real-time granular buffer and time-based effects for Native Instruments Reactor 5. You could feed live audio into Buff Eater, or you could use the included time-stretching tape player to feed audio into the effect. Buff Eater then records the incoming audio and allows you to process it on the fly. The download package features six individual effects and a multi-effects version capable of dynamic effects ordering, resulting in nearly infinite combinations and variations. All effects are MIDI triggered by playing notes on your keyboard, and all knobs can be internally or externally automated. We've also included a well thought out machine template for live use, as well as a core template. The six effects are Stretch, a granular time and pitch stretcher. Tape, a tape deck style very speed effect. Slice repeat, a beat repeat and beat juggling effect with pitch control and reverse. Deconstruct, a time, space and slide effect useful to completely deconstruct audio. Scratch, a turntable style effect Feed grains, a granular feedback effect. Let's get started learning how to use Buff Eater. Double click the file called buffeater.ens included in the download package. Reactor opens and you see the main effects blocks on the left in an instrument called Buff Eater and an instrument called Beat Looper that functions like a tape deck that feeds the effect. If you'd like to feed the effect live audio from your host, simply switch this setting to live or external audio input. For this demo, I'll use the tape player's playback to feed the effect. Hit the spacebar to begin playback and use your QWERTY keys on your keyboard to engage the six effects. When you trigger an effect, you'll notice that a playhead begins to move across the cyan-colored automation lane. You can tell which parameter is currently displayed by looking at the color of the label. A cyan-colored label indicates that you are viewing automation for that parameter. In this case, I'm looking at automation for the grain parameter of the stretch effect. To view a different automation lane, simply click an effects parameter label or move a knob. Clicking the yellow on button turns automation on or off for the currently visible automation lane. To turn automation on and off for every parameter, click the yellow circle above the word on. Each automation lane has the following settings. Loop. When on, the visible automation lane will loop as long as you hold down or trigger the effect. When off, automation will only play back once for each time you trigger an effect. Smooth. When on, automation smoothing is turned on between steps. When off, automation values will jump immediately from step to step. Random. Randomizes the current automation lane. Turn on all to randomize every parameter's automation lane at once. Sequencer speed changes the visual automation lane's playback speed. Loop length changes the length of the automation lane. Below the automation area, you will notice Effects Presets. Each effect block can store up to 64 effects presets by default. You can save, reload, 
copy and paste presets by using the buttons to the left of the preset menu. You can switch the effects presets by selecting them from the menu or by using your up and down arrows on your keyboard while you play the effect. Next, you may have noticed that each effects block has an additional set of settings specific to that effect directly below the knobs. Effects that say re-trigger allow you to re-trigger the effect by recapturing the incoming audio at the rate set in the adjacent menu. Let's listen to the stretch effect with re-trigger on and re-trigger off. Other effects include settings to reverse either the incoming audio or the grain playback. Let's listen to Slice Repeats Reverse Playback. Now let's listen to Feed Grains Reverse Grain Playback. There are two other additional settings found in the Stretch Effect and the Tape Effect. Stretch offers the ability to sync the size of the grains to rhythmic values. To see an exact value readout as you move any knob in Buff Eater, use the display next to the word Sync that appears as you adjust a knob or draw automation. Now let's look at the tape effect. The tape effect offers you a direction option, which essentially allows you to choose whether you want the audio to speed up or slow down. Each effect has a different set of parameters or knobs. To learn more about each specific knob, please refer to the manual or simply turn on hints by clicking the arrow with the eye icon and hovering over a knob. You will see a description of each parameter and each knob for Buff Eater. <laughs> Lastly, let's look at some of the global settings. Bypass turns the effect on and off. To the right of the bypass button, the cyan colored slider allows you to set wet dry levels when the effect is set to mix mode. When set to gate, you will only hear the effects when the effects are triggered and the slider will control the overall volume. Next, the button labeled Sync ensures that the effects triggered are started exactly on time and synchronized to the value set in the adjacent menu. If set to 1-1, one, one, for example, an effect won't start until the next whole note or bar is reached. This is good for live performances, where you need the effects to play back perfectly in time. Next, you'll see the Record button. Turn this on and move any knob while triggering an effect to record automation. Next to record is the save button. This button saves all effects presets at once and a reactor preset known as a snapshot. It is necessary to click this save button and to save your reactor ensemble before closing your project if you have made changes that you'd like to keep. We also recommend that you use a separate version of Buff Eater for each project you work on by using Reactor's autosave options. Please refer to the Reactor manual for more information on autosave.